You know, to a large extent, everything you and I talk about is common sense, right? Mm. Uh, and we have a lot of common sense. I love that. And uh, the problem is the that. they don't have common sense. They don't know what they're doing, and they're destroying our country. We'll turn it around fast. I mean, I just love the common sense thing. And the guy's right. I mean, you know, for a million different reasons, they are avoiding... I mean, it's just goofball stuff. President Trump laid out a series of common sense policies himself to make America prosperous again. And we are going to talk about it with Katie Pavlich, editor of townhall.com and Fox News contributor, and Brian Brenberg, co-host of The Big Money Show, my fave, and Steve Moore of Committee to Unleash Prosperity and host of More Money. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much. Can I just... Uh, Katie, right. You're the non-economist, but you have a lot of common sense, okay? I grew up in a small business, so I know a little bit about uh, economics. Excellent. That puts you at the front of the line of the Biden administration, <laughs> yeah, right? No problem. But it's true. What Trump is saying is a lot of this has to do with all this extreme... Uh, you, okay, uh, no gas-burning stove, okay? No, uh, you can't have good shower heads. You can't have wood-burning pizza. All this stuff that's... You can't have gasoline-powered cars. We have a quote on it, but I just want... People in their gut know that this is not common sense. It's not common sense. It's illogical. It's based on an emotional plea to help the environment, even though these policies actually hurt the environment. You know, electric vehicles are not environmentally friendly. Wind turbines are not environmentally friendly, but they're pushing it all. Um, this idea that we're, the Biden administration is waging a war on oil and gas, which is one of the best things that's ever happened to humanity, mm. uh, is ab it, it will destroy the country and it will destroy moder the modern way of life and, and take people back to a place where they can't actually live the life that they live now and that they can afford. And they're doing it not because it's for the good of the environment. They're doing it because they are, are tyrannical. They're central planners. They want to control people's behavior and they do it through the force of government. And that's what you're seeing. And that's why when President Trump was talking to you yesterday about bringing back American energy, that helps humanity thrive and yep. prosper. Uh, and, and that's a very stark difference between the two of them. By the way, there's a, I, I don't have it here. Uh, we've been pressed for time, but the Nobel Prize winner last year, I think he won it in uh, quantum physics, something like, mm -hmm. some heavy duty thing, who has joined with hundreds of people to say basically mm. that there is no existential climate threat and that these policies are damaging economic growth around the world. They're blowing the whistle. They're right. a complete revolt. Let, let me just play. Here's Trump on energy and inflation. We'll get Brian in. We'll get Steve Moore in. Hang on. Here's Trump on energy and inflation. Inflation was caused, in my opinion, by energy because it, it's so big. Energy is so big. It's like all-encompassing everything. You make donuts and the mm -hmm. ovens and the trucks that deliver them. And no matter what you do, it's so much about energy. And when they stopped drilling, when they, you know, we had it going like nobody, you were a big part of it. You really had a big thing going for selling all this to Europe yeah, and all these other countries, yes, right? And we would have made a fortune. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was so sad to see what they did. They cut it off. And again, we, we were drilling much more. We were a bigger force than Russia and Saudi Arabia individually. In a year and a half, we would have been a bigger force than them combined. And we would have made so much money. All right, there you have that one. Then uh, let me just run one more quickly and then come back to our panel. He has a great riff about choices. This is about freedom, why Americans want choices. Please take a listen. But we will get this country rocking and rolling with energy. Uh, you'll be able to buy an electric car, but you're going to be able to buy every form of car that's made. You've got to have choice, like in school. We want school choice. We want, we want choice for buying cars mm -hmm. and washing machines mm -hmm. and dry all of this stuff all right there you go. brian Benberg, um guy's got a point and i call this again going back to katie this is common sense choices this is a free country he gets the big things really right there you go. and he's there you smart go. enough to not mess around with the little things and i'll say something this will sound odd when you're talking about president trump but there's a certain humility in understanding you don't mess with the stoves. You don't mess with the light bulbs. Smart people in those spaces will figure that out for us. They always have. But if you get inflation, if you get energy, if you get regulation right, 
That's where the power of capitalism comes from. This interview was so powerful because of the simplicity of mm. that message. Mm. And I think when he speaks that way, that's when America listens and says, aha, we've got something we can do together. Phenomenal. Well put. Steve Moore, are you out there someplace? I know you're in the ether zone. There you are. <laughs> Terrific stuff. The other point, and thanks for doing this, Steve, the other point that uh, President Trump, and former President Trump made is the importance of fossil fuels or the lack thereof to inflation. Uh, this is a point, by the way, Mike Falken, uh, Falkenberg, you know, from America First has made many times. Oil and gas is so pervasive throughout the economy, it affects like a couple of hundred different items. So if you choke off uh, production and drilling and jack up prices, you are driving inflation higher. I mean, he has this unique look, his unique perspective, Steve, that the Bidens do not understand. What you think? That's right. And, and you know, he, he basically said when he's reelected president, and I think he will be, that the, one of the first things he gonna, he's going to do is drill, baby, drill. Yes. And get back to making America number one. And by the way, he's not just talking about oil and gas and coal. He's talked about, you know, nuclear power mm -hmm. and, and whatever we got that can make America energy dominant. You know, Katie is exactly right that, and so is the president, that uh, energy is the master resource. So when energy prices go down, the price of everything else goes down. But, Larry, I wanted to make another point because I was there with you uh, when you mm -hmm. did that interview and we had that dinner afterwards with President Trump. And I have to tell you, I just love this new Donald Trump. He's not grousing. He's not angry anymore at the world as he has been, you know, had been after the election. He's talking about policy issues. He's optimistic. He is, uh, you know, he's he's just got this positive outlook now on the country and what he can do to to to. Uh, to revive it. And I just love that about him. And, and if he can stay like that and not talk about what happened in 2020, but talk about his vision of the future and are you better off than you were four years ago, I think he's a winner. He had the look of a winner in that interview. Well, I think that it's just so interesting. That interview was two days after the Georgia indictment and his right. temperament was so moderate and calm right. as he laid right. this whole thing out. I want to make a second point. Katie Pavlich is always right. That's just a matter <laughs> of course. We have learned that <laughs> down times. through the years. Let me just add, uh, let's go to Fed Chairman Jay Powell. Here's Trump on Jay Powell, or the lack thereof. A second Trump uh, administration, you have to put up with Jay Powell. What would you do about that, and would you think about reappointing him? Yeah, uh, I would not reappoint him. Uh, I thought he was always late, mm. whether it was good or bad, but he was always late. Uh, I was surprised he was reappointed. Probably he got reappointed because they knew I didn't like him much. Uh, I felt that he was uh, not good. In fact, I was very tough on him, mm -hmm. and if I wasn't, I think we would have had much higher interest rates for much longer. Yeah, you know, Brian, uh, economist, it's interesting, his criticism, it wasn't high rates versus low rates. Yeah. It was he's always late. Right. And you know what? That's a great point. Yes. It was a brilliant insight. It, I hadn't actually thought about it. It is. And, you know, most people think about how late he was as inflation was going up. Yep. And what people got so mad about is they felt like he was playing the political game. Mm -hmm. People know enough to know the Fed shouldn't be playing the political game. They're supposed to keep an eye on inflation, our pocketbooks. He didn't do that. He bought into the whole transitory thing. And the president's right. If you're going to be late for political reasons, you are in the wrong job if you're the chairman of the Fed. Katie, I know you're not an economist and so forth, but you know about these things. And you know about what? I'm identifying as an economist. <laughs> yes. So when I we, did take a few economics courses we, in I college, totally accept that. Which is more than most people in Congress did. Absolutely. Um, Jay Powell, political guy, he cranked up the money supply. And he, he did it during the pandemic, which is um, defensible. But it wasn't defensible in 2021 and a lot of 2022. And you're, was he a political guy? It seems like it. I mean, he yeah. should have been earlier, as the former president pointed out. But now the Federal Reserve is trying to fix this problem that was created in Washington, D.C., of printing all of this money and causing inflation. And now it's causing another problem, which is high rates and people can't afford to borrow money or buy a house. People can't sell houses. They can't buy them. Did you it's hear Bi Byron Donalds on that point? I mean, you it's, got it's, your... it, it's outrageous how, how they are ruining people's American dream mm -hmm. through their fiscal policies of spending too much money and now trying to fix it 
with the Federal Reserve. I mean, it's, it's a complete disaster for the average American to be spending almost 10,000 extra dollars a year. Right. That's 13% of the average salary, uh, take home pay for the Americans in this country. I mean, it's a complete nightmare for families who are trying to get by. All right, Steve Moore, I got one for you coming up. Here's, this is so interesting, Donald Trump defending King Dollar, not just at home, but on the world stage. Please take a listen to this. We have power, but it's waning. Mm. In fact, it's waning in terms of our currency. And I'm not just talking about the value of our currency. I'm talking about our currency being used throughout the world. You want it to remain. You want the dollar to remain the world's reserve currency. Well, I think it's bigger than losing any war. Mm -hmm. I think if it doesn't, uh, look, we are already reverting to third world status in many ways. We have something that's very powerful, and that's our dollar all over. But you take a look at what's happening to it now with other countries not using it. And you know China wants to replace it with mm -hmm. the yuan. Mm -hmm. And it was unthinkable with us. Unthinkable. Would never have happened. Now people are thinking about it. You know, Steve, this is a very powerful and maybe unexpected point, although I have heard him on this before down through the years. I mean, he said, you lose your res world reserve currency status, it's worse than losing a war. China would love to replace us. They're, they're not going to. But, you know, it's, it's an inflation issue. But I think what he's saying is great countries need to be the center of the world economy. And if you're going to continue American greatness, then you have to have, quote, unquote, a great dollar, or what I call king dollar down through the years. He sees this in national security terms as well as domestic inflation terms. What do you think about that part of the interview? It's kind of new uh, attitude of Trump's. I mean, when you and I first met, you know, started talking to him back in, uh, when he first started running for president, he was kind of in favor of the weak dollar because, he, remember, he thought that that would... Uh, you know, increase American exports. But now I think he gets it exactly right, that one of America's greatest assets is that we are the world reserve currency and that we do have king dollar and a strong dollar, which makes all Americans uh, better off. And, you know, the, one of the themes of the whole interview, Larry, I thought that came through to me is he wants to make America economically and geopolitically a superpower again. Mm -hmm. And we were, frankly, we're losing that status under a weakling president named Joe Biden. Brian, you know, um, he actually, it's funny, he was furious at the Chinese for manipulating the currency, and he's right. Years ago, it was Jap uh, Japan. Right. Could be the EU, anyway. But he sees it in bigger terms. He sees this almost as an America greatness thing. If we're going to make America great again, we cannot lose our world reserve currency. We have the world's money. I think that's really his focus. I, I do, too. He taught you something about tariffs. You taught him something about King Dollar, yeah. maybe, over the course yeah. of this. But notice the linkage, okay? So, so the dollar matters, but he's always linking that to the strength of our economy. You don't become the world reserve currency unless you've got the world's strongest economy. So you got to start there, and that's where the dollar flows from. I like that he gets that right. He doesn't yep. pull apart things in the economy that have to fit together, and growth is the engine of all of that. You know, Katie, just... Larry, it kind of reminds me of the old Reagan line, you know, that you often repeat, you know, strong at home, strong abroad. Yes, and, yes. And Trump gets that. Well, I think he totally gets that. Um, Katie, uh, we played the, the final clip of the interview because uh, we ran over yesterday at the top <laughs> of the show. But he's going to be tough on trade, okay? Um... But he wants this reciprocal trade. So, like, if you're India and I'm the USA and you raise your tariffs to 100%, he said, I'm going to raise my tariffs too. If you cut your tariffs 50%, then I'll negotiate with you. But I think people forget he is the art of the deal. He knows how to negotiate. Yep. And that's going to be, he's going to be tough on trade, but he's willing to negotiate. What did you think of that part? Well, I was surprised that you admitted that he was a better negotiator than you are, Larry. Because oh. I had heard maybe different things. I did see that admission from Your you yesterday. Your humble servant. <laughs> he, can I just tell you this? I had been in office about three or four weeks. And we were on an airplane together, going to a rally in West Virginia, mm -hmm. okay? And so we were kind of talking about how we were selling the trade stuff. <laughs> yeah. And he said that to me. He said, I'm a better negotiator <laughs> than you are. And I will tell you this, in all honesty, he is, he was, he is today, um, the art of the deal. 
because he's using the tariff issue, which is so essential to all these economies, mm. it's a bigger picture than just tariffs. It could be national security, could be war, as he said. Yeah. That's the amazing thing. The guy's a great negotiator. You know who was a great negotiator? I had another boss who was a fabulous negotiator. His name was Ronald was Reagan. Say, Ronald Reagan. Yes, indeed. So, isn't that, I mean, just, I'm going to give you both, the last both word Both presidents don't stuff. want the United States of America and its people to be taken advantage of, whether that's there foreign you. aid or with the economy, so. That's it. That's it. Katie Pavlich, <laughs> you're a pretty good economist. Can I just tell you that right off the top? I'm doing my best. Brian Brenberg, fabulous stuff, my favorite show. Steve Moore down there in the Zone, thank you for helping us. We appreciate it very much. And folks, remember, you can catch Brian along with his co-hosts, Taylor Riggs and Jackie DeAngelis, on The Big Money Show weekdays at 1 p.m. It's a fabulous show right here on Fox Business.